So today I want to talk about making this. Now you're looking at the purple thing, aren't you? That's not what we're making. That takes two minutes. That's easy. Uh, I will make it at the end. It's very simple. No, stop looking at the purple thing. It's this cutout in the cube that we're going to make. We need our final topology to look something like this. Lightweight and flexible. Are you still looking at the purple thing? I'm going to turn it off. Now there's only one tool we can use to create this cut and that is the Boolean modifier. I don't use it often but it does have its uses and this is one of them. But we'll use light geometry for the cutout object and virtually no geometry at all for the area that's being cut. The cleanup will be minimal. And doing it properly also gives me a really good opportunity to introduce the smooth Laplacian modifier which you've almost certainly not used before. And if you did, you didn't do it properly. <laughs> don't worry, no one does. But once you know what it does, it opens up a huge array of modeling possibilities wherever you have three and five spoke poles on an area of curvature. I'm going to show you exactly what it does. Okay, so let's start a new scene and we can use the default cube. I'll just move the camera forward a little. We're going to need three versions of this cube to create the cutout. So select it and press Shift and D and just right click to leave it in place. Press Shift and D, right click again to leave that one in place. And you can see them in the outliner here. So let's rename one of them to Final Cube. This will be the final subdivision surface model, but we need to do a few other things first, so I'm just going to hide this one. Let's select another one and rename this one Patch, and you'll see why in a moment. And for the last one, I'm going to rename that to Sphere, because that's going to be the sphere object which we want to cut out of the cube. Now to make the sphere, I'm just going to press Ctrl and 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'll just press G and Z to move that up so we can see what that looks like. I'm going to go over here and apply the subdivision surface modifier by pressing Ctrl and A because this is the actual geometry we'll use. Now as you know it's ball like but it's not quite a sphere. To make it more of a sphere we can tab into edit mode and press Shift, Alt and S and just hit 1 on the number line to make it more of a sphere. Now if you've watched my video about spheres you'll know that this is not a perfect sphere as some vertices are in the wrong place. But I'm going to use a different method to fix those vertices this time which I hope you'll find very useful all over Blender. I'll do that last, it will make more sense in a moment. For now I'm going to tab back to object mode and I'm going to scale it down a little and I'm going to move it into place on the edge of the cube. This method would work on corners too and it could be positioned anywhere at any depth. And I'm just going to put it here because I quite like having these corners wrapping back around our sphere. Now what we need on the inside of the cut is the exact geometry of the sphere and to get that we need to start with a boolean operation. So I select the patch object. I'm going to add a boolean modifier to it and in the object drop down box I'm going to choose our sphere. I'm going to apply this modifier straight away and hide the sphere to see what we've got. Now if I tap into edit mode here we'll see a lot of problems. There are a lot of end gones and a lot of stray vertices and that's the nature of the boolean modifier, that's what it does. But because we've cut quite a light geometry from only two faces the cleanup will be really simple. Now these two large faces here are a disaster, really complicated end gones which would take edges to fix, so we won't even worry about them, they're going to be deleted soon. Now on the inside of our cut we do have end gones all over the place, and that's not acceptable, but the fix is really very simple. All of the problem vertices have only two edges coming out of them, and we can use that to our advantage. They all have to be deleted, and we can do that by selecting any one of them, it doesn't matter which one, any vertex which doesn't have an edge running down to the next row, and we can go to select, select similar, and amount of connecting edges. And now we can see that all of those vertices all around the edge have been selected. So we can just press X and choose dissolve vertices and they're gone. And now the inside of our cut has a really good topology. Now depending on the depth of the cut or the complexity of the cutout shape there may be a little additional cleanup required but at worst it will just be a couple of remaining end gones which you can just split in half at the edge. The cleanup here is done. Now we need to select everything that makes up the outside of the model. In this case it's just a cube so we could easily switch to face select mode and just go around and, and shift select them all. But it could be that this is just a small cutout on a really big complicated mesh. So you'd want to select the inside first, which in this case I'd do by going to edge select mode. Alt and click this central loop here. Press Ctrl and plus a few times until that's all selected. Switch to face select mode and press Ctrl and I to invert the selection. It's good to practice selection techniques like this to make your workflow much quicker in general. Now with all of the outside of the object selected, I'm going to press I to inset. And inset them out uh, a distance, it doesn't really matter how much. Just make sure none of these lines converge together. So we'll click to confirm this and you'll notice as we orbit the camera that some of the edges are now at strange angles which we don't want. We need to go down to the inset faces property box and turn on edge rail. And this forces the inset to follow any existing edges wherever it can, which makes the new edges follow the shape of our cube. And that's very useful. Now press I again to do that one more time. 
Now the outside faces will still be selected and we don't want to use them as it would take too long to fix all the connections. So we're just going to press X and choose faces to delete them all, leaving us with this patch. And that's why we named it patch. Now we can have a look at this with the subdivision surface modifier. If I just tab to object mode, set it to shade smooth and add a subdivision surface modifier to it, we can see that already we have this really good cut. Now I'll just undo that because I like to work in flat shading for this kind of thing. Now this patch is an awkward shape to connect to anything so we need to fix that first and that's why we performed the second of the insets. If I switch to vertex selection mode I need to find one of the three spoked poles on the inside of the cut. There are two of them, one here and one here. Now from this I need to follow the edges until we reach the outside of our patch and select the vertex that sits there. Now from the three spoked pole I want to follow the edge the other way until I get to this vertex. Now if I control and select this vertex, it'll select all of the points in between. This is going to be one side of edges which I straighten up. If I change the transform pivot point to active element and I want to make one of the vertices that are furthest to the edge active, so I'm going to shift and click this vertex and then shift and click it again and it'll turn white, meaning it's the active element in the selection. If I now press S to scale, Y to constrain it to the Y axis and type zero, those will all be straightened up along the y-axis. So I need to do this at the other side. I find the vertex that only has three edges coming out of it. I follow it to the edge, select that, and then go back and trace the line along to the other edge. And I want to control and click this vertex, and that will select all of these. Make one of the vertices on the outside edge the active one by shift-clicking it twice. And then again, I can press S, Y, and 0. And that straightens those up. Now I need to do the same for the top and bottom, so I'll just select from corner to corner here. I'll select one and then control and click the other. And then I'll shift click this vertex twice. And this needs to go along the X axis, so I'm going to press S, X, 0. Last one, just at the bottom, click a vertex, control click the other side, shift and click this one twice, press S and Z and 0. And that looks great. Now it's best to make any edges that run along this corner here parallel to this edge. And again, we can do that by scaling them. If I select this vertex here, and then go to the inside and control and click that one so that it's the active vertex, I can press S, X, and zero, and that'll straighten those up. I can do the same at the other side, click a vertex, control click the one on the inside and press S, X, zero. Now I need to do that for these two and these will move in Z, so select the outside one, then the inside, S, Z, zero. Same at the other side. Click, control click, S, Z, zero. Now we have our patch ready to easily connect to our shape. So let's tab to object mode and unhide the final cube. And I'm going to turn on wireframe overlay so we can see our patch object all the time at the same time as our other shape. And I'm just going to select it. Now we need to add some loops to our shape to match the connection area for the patch. I'm going to turn on snapping and make it vertex snapping because we're going to snap to these vertices around the edge of our patch. First of all, I'm just going to surround our shape with loops. So I'm going to Tab into edit mode, press Ctrl and R, add a loop, and when I get close to this corner vertex, it'll snap to it. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Ctrl R, snap one there. I need one running across, so Ctrl R, snap it there, and the same on the bottom. Ctrl R, and snap it there. Now our shape is surrounded on all sides. Now if I look at the vertices in the middle of these two loops here, I can see there are one, two, three unconnected vertices. So I need to press Ctrl R, type three, and hit enter and then just right click to confirm that I want them there. Now if I alt and click one of these loops and press GG to slide it along, it'll snap to the nearest vertex to it when I hover over it. I do the same with the middle one, although it seems to be in the middle, it's good to always check. And then the same on this one here. Now we can see in between these two here, I have one, two, three again. So I can just press Control R, three, hit enter, right click, and then select them and press GG to slide them into place. And they'll all snap to the correct place. So that's the top done. I need to do the front now. The loops that ran all across will all be in the right position. So it's just the ones at the side I need to do. So I've got one, two, three to do. So I press Control R, type three, hit enter, right click, and then just alt and click one of these loops and press GG to slide it until it snaps to the correct vertice. Now we have the same topology on our object as we do at the edge of our patch. But we need to get rid of all these faces here so that our patch can replace them. And the way to do that is to switch to face select mode select one of the vertices at the very corner and then press Control and shift and select the other one at the other side that's just a quick way of selecting groups of faces select them however you can it's worth getting used to selecting groups of faces quickly like this but that comes with practice 
Now I can just press X and choose faces and they're gone. As you can see our patch fits perfectly so it's time to join these two objects together. In object mode I want to select the patch then tab to edit mode, switch to vertex selection mode and I'm going to alt click on the outside loop just because I need to know how many vertices it contains and I can see down here that it's made up of 24 vertices. We're going to merge some vertices and we need to know how many is the correct number to get rid of. Now if I tab back to object mode, shift and click the final cube object and just press Control and J to join, we'll see that our patch object is gone. It's been absorbed into final cube. They're all just one object now. So let's get rid of the overlapping vertices by tabbing into edit mode, press A to select everything and then press M and choose by distance. And we can see down here that it's got rid of 22 vertices and we need that to be 24. So if I just nudge up the merge distance by one click, that'll normally do the trick and that changes it to 24 vertices. That's what we need. That's merging all of the unnecessary points together. Now I'm going to tap into object mode. I'm going to turn off the wireframe overlay. We don't need that anymore and we don't need to have snapping on anymore. So I'll turn that off too. Now I can set our object to shade smooth and I can press control and three to add a subdivision surface modifier to it. And we have this one object with this nice cut out of it. Now the cut is good, but because it's a subdivision surface model, we can improve it. We can add uh, control loops around here to tighten up the sharpness of the edge. I'm just going to switch to edge select mode and I always like to do it. I'm going to mark that as a seam, it turns it red. So I always know I can just press GG at any time and that'll slide along changing the sharpness of the curve at the edge. I may want more loops to tighten up this point here. So I can add a loop here and tighten that up and maybe one here. And we end up with this shape. We still have a lot of control. We can make it really sharp or really loose, however we want it. And this looks great, but there's still one unresolved problem. If I switch to the red mat cap, we'll see that as we orbit the camera around, we can see that this point of light gets smaller at a certain point and then larger as we orbit the camera around. And if I switch to edit mode and turn on on cage, we can see that that's happening around this three spoked pole. It gets bigger and then it gets smaller around there and then it gets bigger again as it moves away from it. And that's because the light is being pinched in towards the three spoked pole because it's in the wrong place. You can find out more about that again in my video about spheres, but I'm going to use a very different method to fix this one. If I switch to the zebra stripe mat cap, we can take a closer look at what's happening. Now you see these lines are bending in towards the three spoked pole. What we need to do is change the position of these vertices, but that's too difficult to do by hand. We're going to use a modifier to do it for us. The first thing to do is change to point select mode and I'm going to select one of these vertices and then shift and select the other. And then I'll press control and G to make those a vertex group. And I'm going to rename that to pinch fix. It's always a good idea to name your vertex group so you know what they're for. Now the modifier we're going to use is called the smooth Laplacian. Its purpose is to recalculate the position of extraordinary vertices on a curved surface. That's a, that probably sounds complicated, but it's really not. Now, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to call this modifier a smooth because that's misleading. If you've ever tried to use it as a smoothing tool, you'll have found it confusing and seemingly useless. It's not really used to smooth things. It's used to fix bad vertex positions. But it's confusing that the Blender manual doesn't even describe it correctly for some reason. And as a result, no one seems to know what it does. Well, let me show you. We'll go to the modifier panel and we're going to add a Laplacian smooth. But first of all, we need to turn off the subdivision surface modifier. If you don't do that, then the new modifier can take a little while to work through all of the geometry. So then I'll go to the add modifier panel and I'll choose smooth Laplacian. And then I'll move that to the top of the stack and I can turn our subdivision surface modifier back on. Now the first thing I want to do is tell the modifier that I only want it to operate on our problem vertices. So I'll choose the pinch fix vertex group in the drop down box. I'm going to turn on edit mode and on cage so we can see what's happening. And as I increase the repeat value, you'll see that these lines start to straighten out. And that's because the vertices are being moved in order to try to make this a proper curved surface. It goes all the way up to 200, but that's a little too much. I normally set it to around 130. You have to do it by eye to an extent. You'll just see the lines straightening up as you change the value. And now that it's done that, I can just tap to object mode and press control and A and apply it. And its job is done. Now this zebra mat cap is giving me a bit of a headache, so I'm just going to switch back to the red one. And now as we orbit the camera around this area, we'll see that our point of light doesn't change shape as it moves around the cut. The influence of those three spoke poles has been fixed. And that's it. We've successfully cut a sphere out of the edge of our cube. We can use this method on corners and at any depth within our shape. The angle of the faces of the object we're cutting doesn't really matter. 
The lightweight and logical loops which make the shape make UV unwrapping and texturing a really simple job. It's a good subdivision surface so any warping tools will work perfectly and we can model both the inside and the outside of the cut or a combination of both. It's actually a pretty difficult shape to break. It'll be much more fun to work with than any boolean effort and the incredibly lightweight of the geometry will play really well with all other modifiers, other software, game engines, anything you want. Because no normals calculations or creasing have been used, it'll play well with any software. We just call that being portable and it's really important in CG. And we can turn on the original sphere and just add a subdivision surface modifier to make it smooth and uh, you'll see it's a fairly good fit. We would now be free to use shrink wrapping to make things even more precise but this is normally fine. Now I'll just make that purple thing because I said I would. So with the sphere selected and scaled down a little bit, I'm going to tab to edit mode. I'm going to say select, what shall I use, select random and change that to deselect. A different random seed, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to change the extrude type, make sure it's extrude individual. I'm going to change the transform pivot to individual origins. And then I'm going to pull this little yellow circle or push this little yellow circle actually just to extrude those out a little. I'm going to scale them down and then I'm going to pull that little circle again. Or again, push it, scale that down, maybe do that another time. I won't scale them down one last time. And that gives us this randomly spiked ball. Now over in the modifiers panel, I'm going to add three wave modifiers. One, two, three. I'm just going to change the time in all of these. So I'm going to change the first one to 0.1. The time in the second one, I'm going to change that to 0.05. And in the third one, I'm going to change that to 0.15. I'll just play and see how that looks. It's a good interesting random motion. Now I'm going to make the whole thing turn around a bit. So I'm going to set a keyframe for all of the rotation values. Then I'm going to go to frame 100 and I'm going to change the X to 90, the Y to 180 and the Z to 360. It's good to give them just a bit of an offset. And again, I'm going to set a keyframe there. Now I want this uh, rotation to continue on. So I'm going to set the interpolation and I'll do that by changing this to a graph editor. Just pressing shift and E and say linear extrapolation. I can then quickly just change that back to a timeline. And now if I go to the first frame and just press play, we'll see this thing, uh, you know, kind of wobbling around. Oh, I need to put the subdivision surface modifier at the end of the stack, and that'll do a much better job. The subdivision surface modifier should always be the very last thing in a stack. I'm just going to scale it down a bit because it's hitting the edges. I'm going to press this little number here, which makes it a unique material. And I'm going to change the base color to, yeah, kind of a purple and make it quite dark. And uh, there we have it, our little uh, funny thing floating around in, more importantly, our amazing cut. I don't know where the little purple thing came from, the cut's the important part. Now there are other techniques for more complex cuts, but this is good for now and it should open up a lot of modelling possibilities. This is one of the best ways to do it, and this is one of the main methods I use when I'm given Boolean sketches of objects and I start remaking them properly for further modelling, texturing, animation and rendering. I hope you enjoyed that one, I think I'll get on now and make the king for our chess set.